Hey everyone, Mark here at the Off Grid Homestead in the great state of Arizona. Let's see, today is Friday, October 6th, 2023. And tomorrow morning I'm headed out on a, a search with law enforcement to, you know, into the back country to see if we can uh, locate somebody. An individual has been missing since the uh, 4th of July, a young 16 year old boy. I'm going to get in that, into that in a minute, let y'all know the details and what we're expecting with that. But I also want to give you a quick update on a couple of things that I'm doing here on the old off-grid homestead. Now, as many of y'all know, I've been rotational grazing my sheep, and I've been using this electric fence netting. And I have 364-foot links. And I put them in a spot, leave them there for about three days, and I take it down, move it, and, you know, it's a few hour process just to do it all, you know, to put in the, the ground rods as you go and different things. So I'm not liking it. Moving the, this, uh, when you take it down, you kind of drag the fencing it out here, you know, it's not like smooth, lush terrain grass. It's, you know, there's cactuses and everything else sticking up. So you get caught on that and this, this fencing, this is stark line electric fence setting I'm using. It seems to break pretty easy. So I'm having to patch it all the time. So I'm not liking it. So what I'm doing, and I'm going to show you all over here. I'm getting ready to start putting in some pasture with barbed wire fence. And then I'm going to put some poly wire, electric poly wire around it. But instead of trying to fence around, you know, our whole 42 acres, which would take a lot of money to do at once and take me a long time before I could get it done. I'm, uh, I'm going to do about one acre paddocks. Four strands of barbed wire, fence stays, and probably two strands of poly wire along that fence to keep the predators out. And uh, and then within that acre, I'm going to divide it. So I, I'm going to have a divider going across so I can probably rotational graze, maybe about on an eighth of an acre each time, and then move them, move them, move them. I'm starting out with one, and then I'll have that one done and i'm going to add gradually add on make another paddock under the side of it another one on the side of it but a little bit at a time and then behind me here i got a huge area grassy area back here i'm way down here it's going to be my biggest paddock i'll probably do in like maybe a four acre area and then section it off to rotational graze them because this just isn't working. And I imagine when I get here in the winter time, it's really going to be a pain in the butt trying to move this fencing and, and this and that. So, well, let me take it back. It's working, but it's not convenient at all. You know, it could take up several hours of your day when you got other stuff to get around here and do. So let me get over here and let me show you where the other pasture is going to be. So start digging my first hole. I'm going to use H braces on the corners. And I'm going 100 yards this way, 50 yards over, 100 yards up, and 50 yards back. It's going to go, that's my mom and stepdad's little vacation place right there. It's going to come up right beside their place here and then back over here. So that'll be, it's actually be about 45,000 square feet. That'll be the first paddock to get them in to where I don't have to worry about them busting through that electric fence netting, which they do, you know, they can go right through it. So just not liking it. So making a change there. Another change we're making, these solar panels behind us here. Now these are, I've been using them for a few years now. They are 250 watt panels each and they, uh, they're used. I got them for 40, I think it was $40, maybe $50 a piece. And they've been doing a good job, but they're declining. So what I want to do, I'm going to get a couple brand new, but larger panels. And what I can, all I need is like about 1,000 watts to come in, maybe 1,500. And it can charge my batteries and do just fine. But I want to get this condensed with the panels. And then I can make me a good array where I can move it around and adjust it a little bit. That's the next thing that's coming here pretty soon is the new solar panels because we're trying to make some adjustments, make things a little more easier, a little more comfortable. 
you know, so your time's not tied up doing other, you know, tied up with certain things when you should be out doing other things, you know. So we're making slow improvements. We've got everything done. Everything is working. It's doing fine. But we want to improve on that. And we're even considering getting Starlink. Now, we've been using the uh, Verizon uh, hotspot with the, the MiFi, I think it's called. MiFi, little thing. And Michelle uses it for her work and all that stuff. But uh, we're going to make some changes there because the connection can flutter around a little bit. And uh, so we're thinking about getting that Starlink. The initial cost is going to cost a fortune. But I think in the long run, it's going to save some headaches. And actually, the monthly payment on that will be less than what the Verizon bill is with more consistent service and faster internet so I can get videos out easier. It takes me a while to upload one of these videos when I do it. So it'd be a lot easier. Let's get over here and I'll talk about the search tomorrow. So a little, little while back, I did a video about a, a young teenager that was missing from a, a town not far from here. I can dirt road to this town. It's called uh, Joseph City, Joseph City, Arizona. And uh, his name is Jarrett Brooks. And he became a he came missing on uh, the morning of July fourth of twenty twenty three, and there's been absolutely no sightings of him. Nobody's seen him. They know he left his house that morning, and he was classified as a runaway, you know. But then now it's endangered because they don't know what happened to him. And there's been no sightings, and there's a fifty thousand dollar reward for him, and nobody's come forward. And you would think they would. So he was seen on the corner, and he did have a a handgun with him. And they've been searching, following all kinds of leads all around the country, and nothing's turned up anything. So tomorrow morning, there's an organized search, and uh, I'll be taking this and bringing some first aid gear and different things in case anybody needs it. To uh, it basically could possibly be a recovery, and uh, the fact that he hasn't been seen, and there was a search done on the ground to a certain extent and i even did a search you know between where i live and this town out in the back country but no not, didn't see anything obviously but so tomorrow we're doing the search and uh there's a lot of volunteers going out there to do it i don't know what the what the situation is going to be you know if we uh it's kind of hard to say you, you want to if he's out there somewhere you know, if, you know, something bad happened, then uh, you want to find him. You know what I mean? And uh, if, even if it's just a recovery, just so the family could have closure. But at the same time, you hope that, that he's not out there. Because that means there's still hope that he's somewhere, you know. Either, uh, hopefully not in danger, but they do have him as an endangered juvenile right now. And I, I'm going to put his poster and everything up here. So if, he could be anywhere. You know, he lived right off Interstate 40, and, uh, you know, that's a busy throwaway clear across the country. So if, if a bad actor got him, he could end up, you know, at your neighbor's house. You wouldn't even know it. You know what I mean? So I'm still asking you guys to keep an eye out for him and uh, just in case, and I'll let you all know what the outcome is tomorrow. It's going to be a pretty in intense shirt search. There's been a lot of, you know, permission gathered from uh, – from landowners and, and different things, you know, private property for the search to go on in different areas. And uh, I'm going to do, we're going to do our part. You know, we can travel, cover some ground with this. Got my binoculars, my spotting scope, and everything I need for the back country to, to stay out there and do what we got to do for a while. So that's where we're at. Going and hunting for that missing child. And uh, we don't know how it's going to turn out, but we'll see. You know, the fact that he left home with a handgun could have went either way. It could have been for protection or, or something else. We don't know. So that's what I got for you. I appreciate you all watching. Wish us luck. Like and subscribe to keep up. I'll catch you on the next one.